Hello Superman fans, this is TV Crazy Man and in this video I'm going to be nitpicking the third season of The Adventures of Superman. Trying to find goose on this classic TV show. Great Caesar's ghost! Basically, this is just for the fun of it. So let's get started into the first season that The Adventures of Superman was presented in color in season three. Golly, what'll Superman do now? I don't know, Jimmy. I don't know. In a very funny episode, the bully of Dry Gulch, Lois and Jimmy are up against some mean cowboys in a town that looks like it came out of a TV western. In one outdoor scene, the same woman wearing a red shirt keeps popping up. Here she comes the first time. She looks like she is genuinely curious as to what these dudes are doing here. Here she is again a few seconds later, but now she somehow got way back behind Jimmy. Is this lady like a ghost or an alien? How did she get way back there? Here she comes again. She's still looking really curious. I wonder if she was an alien observer that is able to teleport across time and space. Now I mentioned this episode is really funny. This isn't necessarily uh, a goof by the strictest of definitions, but I have to mention this scene in this episode that you could say is very unlike Superman as we normally see of him. But then again, it's probably representative of what Superman is thinking throughout this series. Clark's on the phone with Lois, and she keeps trying to tell him that Jimmy Olsen is in trouble. Jimmy's in jail, and he's going to be shot at sundown. Lois, I'm very busy. He's not really interested. And he's gunning for Jimmy. Tell him to go on a diet. He'll be harder to hit. Until she mentions, um, well, listen for yourself. It cracks me up every time I see it. Besides putting Jimmy in jail, this, this character's been making Google eyes at me. He's been doing what? Yeah, you can throw Jimmy Olsen in jail, but brother, when you make googly eyes at Lois Lane, it's on. That's different. I'll be right out. Now, in the episode, The Talking Clue, Superman is covered in plaster dust when he busts through a wall. And a moment later, he's totally clean. Must be one of those superpowers that we didn't know about. We talked about before how George Reeves' stuntman ducked when the bad guys threw his gun at Superman after he ran out of bullets in the first season, and how Reeves normally would just let the gun hit him. But in the third season, as if Reeves were acknowledging the first season goof, he seems to always grab the gun out of the bad guy's hands before they can throw it at him. Now again, in the episode The Talk Include, the outside of the police station is shown a couple of times in this episode. The same two cars are parked outside, and the same cop is riding his tricycle in the same direction. Now you could say that they were just reusing the same film footage, or my theory is that this was an incident with a time loop. Well, what can I say? I do have a big imagination, and I love time travel stories, like my book series The Time Cruisers that connects to the Philadelphia Experiment. Check it out. If you enjoy fun-loving time travel stories, I think you'll have fun reading the entire series that takes you from World War II to biblical times, an early American Western period, and even way into the future. Thanks. If you like writing reviews at Amazon, I'd greatly appreciate it too if you took the time to write one for one of my books, after you read it, of course. And speaking of time travel, in the episode Through the Time Barrier, Superman gets stuck in prehistory, unable to get back to the present, thanks to Winnie the Pooh. Well, I should say the voice of Winnie the Pooh, actor Sterling Holloway, who in this episode is a scientist named Professor Twiddle, who happens to have invented a time machine that only sends people back in time. Here we go! But he got so excited he forgot to figure out how to get them back to the present. Of course, they make it back eventually, but not through the use of Superman's powers. In the comics, Superman can break the time barrier. However, Superman tries and fails to do so in this episode. But I can't crack the time barrier. And Superman had time traveled in the comics as far back as the 40s. So strictly speaking, this could be considered a goof. But then, of course, television and movies never mirror the comics perfectly. Well, what's the trouble? Didn't you ever see a caveman before? Speaking of Superman not using his powers the same way you would in the comic books, in the episode The Lucky Cat, why doesn't Superman use his super breath to put out the fire? And before anybody gets upset with me, I did say that I was going to be nitpicking. What have I done to deserve you? You're just lucky, I guess. 
Acme department store. I uh, have some things he bought. In the episode Olsen's Millions, there's an Acme department store delivery man who's dressed more like a bellhop for some reason. In the episode Superman Week, Superman poses for a painting which is actually based on a previous publicity photo George Reeves had done. This is actually the same photo that was used for a season one DVD cover decades later. Goodbye, miss. You can consider this next one a goof or just a reality of a TV show working with a tight budget. Check out this scene of Superman jumping out of the Daily Planet window right after changing from his Clark Kent disguise. They use this same scene several times in the series. In the episode The Talking Clue, they used it to represent a window in Inspector Henderson's building. I think they must have used the same window and room to represent various different locations for Superman to land and take off in. Here it appears to be again on the episode Lucky Cat. They've just added a few things to make it look like someone's office. Here it is again on the episode Superman Week has an apartment for a painter. The door is missing, but the window seems to line up with the Daily Planet's window. I think they just added a wall and some curtains to create a new room here. Here it is again on the episode Olsen's Millions. So either they use the same kind of window a lot for different rooms, or they just use the same room and changed it out over and over again. Don't all of you treat me as though I were going crazy? Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment, and like the video so others will get a chance to see it and I can keep making videos on classic TV shows. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Thanks again and have a great day. Thanks, pal.